Oxford University. Members of the Oxford University Southernizing Criminology Discussion Group, students, the viewing and listening audience globally, Buenos Aires, Bonjour, Buntari, Shubarafan, Nihau, good afternoon. So whether you are attending this talk virtually or face-to-face, -face, I extend my deepest gratitude to you. As Louise mentioned, as Carla mentioned, I'm Wendell Wallace. I'm an English-trained barrister. I'm a certified mediator with the Mediation Board of Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm a tenured lecturer at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine, where I lecture in criminology and criminal justice. So in the event that some of you may be a bit unaware as to where Trinidad and Tobago is, I have provided a visual. So you're seeing that Trinidad and Tobago there, um, so put in red at the top. So it's the southernmost country in the Anglophone Caribbean. And of course, you're seeing Oxford Circle a bit lower here. So you're seeing that I am a, uh, um, quite a distance away from home. Nonetheless, I feel very much welcomed here in this amazing British weather. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I've spent 18 months studying at Northumbria University Law School in Newcastle, so I'm familiar with the, the British weather. And in Newcastle, I encountered only four days of what I term Caribbean-esque weather. So it's, it's, a really, it's a real pleasure for me to be here with you this afternoon. But I want to again thank Luis, thank Carla, and thanks to, Oxford, thank to the Oxford University for having me here this afternoon. So as part of the Oxford University Southernizing Criminology Discussion Group at this prestigious and world-renowned institution, I was asked by Luis to speak on the topic, Anglophone Caribbean Criminology. And I trust that at the end of this session that Luis will be satisfied that I have presented and I have lived up to his expectation. So as I get into my presentation this afternoon, it is without fear or favor, malice or ill will, that I openly announce my enormous respect for the Oxford University and for its attempt to educate the world at large on the state of criminology globally. Instructively, the state of criminology in different parts of the world is a long ruminated topic. However, placement on the front burner is of a more recent vintage. By having these discussions on the state of criminology in different parts of the world, the Oxford University Southernizing Group is extending criminology's gaze, is extending criminology's horizons, as well as seeking to, to, to broaden those frontiers of criminology. Without a doubt, these discussions serve to raise awareness of the distinct patterns and trends of crime, justice and punishment experienced in geographic locales that are not at the center, an issue that I will touch on later in my discourse. Events of this nature, such as the one we are here, we are witnessing today, are effective tools for discussing criminological issues beyond the core countries. In fact, they serve to provide tools to think about the center and the periphery and the relations to each other. Conversations such as the one we are having today are also important to discuss the unequal power relations and the knowledge production and transference of criminological thoughts in different parts of the world. They also serve to contemporize criminological knowledge. And for this, the Oxford University must be commended. As criminologists, most of us have come to the realization that crime is an everyday occurrence. And just as crime is an everyday occurrence, so too is the study of criminology. The study of crime is conducted in every part of the world without a doubt, and there are distinct features and not so distinct features that are evident in different parts of the world. Yet, despite the recognition of the distinct features of crime and criminology in different parts of the world, the production and transference of criminological knowledge 
is centered at specific locations. And this afternoon, we will look at what obtains at the center, what obtains at the periphery, and then we look at the state of criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean. It has been argued by a host of scholars such as Kerry Carrington, Massimo Sozo, Russell Hogg, and Daniel Watson that the study of criminology, as well as the creation and transference of criminological knowledge, is divided into the center and the periphery. This center periphery dichotomy has also been alluded to by Lou and his colleagues in the Asian context. So it seems that the center periphery dichotomy is not only restricted to regions in the global south, but it encompasses areas in Asia as well as in the Caribbean. So what Lou and his colleagues found in the Asian context is that the international relations within criminology or the distribution of scholarly communities, they, they are outputs as well as communication bar barriers. And these are again placed into two categories, the center and the periphery. Now, without a doubt, issues of centrality and peripherality, they have their origins in the history of criminology as a scholarly discipline. Now, if you were to imagine, if you were to imagine criminology, if you were to evaluate, if you were to examine criminology, what you'll find is that criminology as a discipline began being studied in Europe, in the USA, and in the UK long before other regions. And with that said, the global perspective is that criminology is centered at these locations. When you look at the Caribbean, for example, despite the years of clamoring for internationalization and globalization of criminology, we remain firmly entrenched on the periphery. And I pause so that you can understand what I've just said. We in the Caribbean remain firmly entrenched on the margins of criminology. And this positionality has implications for the production and distribution of scholarship, as well as for teaching and research. Kim 2008 also points to the issue of the center and the periphery and says that there are three dimensions. I want to take you now to these three dimensions. So these are the three dimensions. So you're seeing the center, you're seeing the periphery. And in the middle, you're seeing infrastructure, internal organization, conditions of existence and reproduction, internal position and recognition. And these are these three facets, these three nuggets, as I like to see, they are related to what obtains at the center as well as what obtains on the periphery. So let us now consider these three issues. Let us now consider them. Scientific development requires appropriate materials, both institutional and individual, and the lack of the necessary infrastructural material, including governmental sponsorship of research, as well as appropriate databases, hinders the development of criminology. Scientific research is therefore, sorry, scientific development is therefore determined by external factors such as the availability of funding, scientific and higher education infrastructures and local academic cultures. Another aspect which I will touch on a bit later as it relates to um, the research culture in the Caribbean. A second issue associated with the center periphery dichotomy refers to the conditions of existence, that's at number two. And that has implications for autonomy and dependence. So that if we in the Caribbean, if we are not autonomous one, it means that we do not fall at the center. We fall at the other end, uh, we fall on the uh, periphery 
And it means that we are dependent on those at the center for validation of criminological tools. We are dependent on those at the center for funding, for publications. We are dependent for almost everything. And that places us firmly um, under the dependency bracket of being on the periphery. The third issue that we must consider is that of centrality and marginality. And with the, the, with the issue of centrality and marginality, those at the center are afforded pride of place in the context of criminology, while the opposite is reserved for scholars who are on the margins. And what happens is that at most occasions or quite frequently, important contributions that have been made to the field of criminology, they are oftentimes lost. Quite notably, within the recent times, more and more scholars at the periphery are attempting to diminish the centrality of criminology by seeking to remove the discipline from its distal position to a more central one. In sum, the newer generations of scholars in, for example, the Anglophone Caribbean, in the Asian context, in Australia and New Zealand, they are attempting to remove that stranglehold that has been placed um, on countries and on geographic regions outside of what we term the center. And of course, the center refers generally to the UK, the USA, and Europe. In another context, it was only as recent as 2013 that Lou and his colleagues recognized the underdevelopment, and that speaks the underdevelopment speaks to being on the periphery when you look at um, figure one. So Lou and his colleagues recognized that in the Asian and in the South Asian context, criminology was placed on the periphery. And one of the things that they did in an attempt to move it from that distal position into a position that is more aligned with the center is that they produced the handbook of Asian criminology. And what that did is that it was an attempt to highlight the distinct forms of criminology and to move Asian criminology away from being on the fringes and more to the center. It's important that I spent some time discussing issues at the center and the periphery so that when I get into uh, looking at the state of criminology in the Caribbean, you will understand my positionality. As it pertains to criminology in the English-speaking Caribbean, an important question to be asked and answered is whether criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean is located at the center or at the periphery? That's an important question that we in the Caribbean have been trying to answer. That's an important question that persons outside of the Caribbean have been trying to answer as well. So this question, the positionality of criminology in the Caribbean, as well as its answer, that's the starting point for my discussion this afternoon. Okay. So in the event, in the event that those of you who are present in the room physically, as well as those of you who are present virtually, in the event that you are unsure as to the answer to the question that I just posed, a bit later in the discussion, I will provide you with a timeline that will show you the location of the Anglophone criminology being on the periphery. From my perspective as a criminologist and from someone wearing different hats as a non-practicing attorney, as well as a mediator, I have had the good fortune of viewing criminology from different perspectives and from different lens. And it is without fear of contradiction that I can firmly ascertain that criminology in the English speaking Caribbean is located at the periphery. Now it's important to note that when we speak of the Caribbean, that we have the English, French, Dutch, Anglophone Caribbean. And this afternoon in presenting my data, in presenting analyses 
um, I'll be looking at the 12 countries of the Anglophone Caribbean, namely Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. It's also important to note that these countries' political and governance systems were derived from the British colonial past. And due to both history and language, the region has developed its strongest ties with uh, Europe, uh, more so with the UK and the US. So as I share information with you this afternoon, I take my bearings from the works of the first known criminologist in the Caribbean, Dr. Ken Price, who in 1976 made a prescient call for a Caribbean criminology. In 1976, Dr. Ken Price recognized that criminology was non-existent in the region. He also recognized that it was much needed in the region, and I may admit that up to today, it is still very much needed. You know, I am aware that the further up the academic ladder one climbs, the more people think that you know everything about everything. And I'm certain that some of you here today um, can attest to that, that people think you know everything about everything. Unfortunately, I do not lay claim to knowing everything about everything. I may know quite a lot about some things, but not everything about everything. So this afternoon, I will expound only upon the state of criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean. And I intend to use my time quite wisely by focusing on what I call three nuggets. I cannot use my 90 minutes um, speaking about the state of Caribbean criminology broadly. Otherwise, we may be here until tomorrow. So I'll focus on only three nuggets. So these three nuggets for your ease of reference are, I will present a historical overview of criminology in the Anglo-Caribbean region. I will also look at scholarship. I will look at research and publications. And the third nugget will focus on challenges, achievements, and opportunities. And importantly, all of the nuggets that I've mentioned, they are separate but they are interrelated to the state of criminology in the Caribbean. So in examining these three areas this afternoon, I intend to crystallize some of these nuggets that are related to criminology in the Caribbean. Nuggets which I think are important for your understanding and for your appreciation of criminology in the region. A criminology that is evolving and constantly growing in magnitude. And in the time that I have this afternoon, I will only draw reference to these three nuggets, these three facets, and I will leave you to examine them as you are scholars of criminology. Some of you are actually what we term scholars, and some of you may be budding scholars. So I will leave you um, to examine them further this afternoon. And hopefully at the end of the presentation, uh, you may agree, you may disagree with me, but I'm hoping that I am proven to be correct. So first, let me look at a historical overview of criminology in the Caribbean. Criminology and criminal justice was officially launched at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus in February 1997. So you see how recent we are, February 1997. And it was launched as a project under the, the directorship of Professor Ramesh Diasaran, one of the uh, more knowledgeable and stalwarts of criminology in the region. However, as a core discipline, as a core discipline, criminology was only started at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine, my campus, in 2005. I'm proud to say that I was one of the first students in that program. And in that program in 2005, we started fully having uh, the bachelor's, the master's, MPhil, and PhD programs only in 2005. So again, you're seeing how recent we are. Now, it's not to say that the study of criminology did not exist prior to 1997 or prior to 2005. Right? 
You had early stalwarts of criminology, such as Dr. Ken Price, such as Dr. Maureen Kane, who eventually um, migrated to England. I think uh, Dr. Kane was at Cambridge University. Uh, you had other persons, such as Professor Ramesh Tiasaran and Professor Anthony Harriot in the 1990s and early 2000s. So I now want to take you through that timeline so that you can get a better appreciation of criminology in the region. So in the 1960s and 1970s, most of the Caribbean countries or several of the Caribbean countries, English-speaking Caribbean countries, received their independence from the British. So this was what I term the honeymoon phase. We had some crime. Crime wasn't at the level that it is at today. Right? So we were there in an abeyance. Persons were barely studying criminology, but it was present. Then we go to 1980 to 2000. This is the second wave. And that's when we had what I call an exploration or the searching phase. At that time, crime started to increase exponentially, possibly due to development within the Caribbean region, among other things. But at that point in time, people started searching, scholars started searching for criminological thoughts and criminological reasons as to um, the causation of crime uh, in the context of criminology within the Caribbean. From 2000, 2001 to 2020, this is what I call the explosion phase. During this phase, this is when you had a host of Caribbean students who were leaving the region going to Europe, the United Kingdom, or uh, the UK. And in fact, some students were studying within the Caribbean. So you had an explosion in terms of um, scholarship, in terms of literature, in terms of seeking knowledge on criminology in the region. So that's the third wave. And what I call the fourth wave, or the newest wave, is from 2020, 2021, and beyond. And that's where the Caribbean, the Anglophone Caribbean as a region, we are trying to find our identity. We are trying to find our identity um, and locate ourselves within the realm of Africana criminology, uh, Australian criminology, New Zealand criminology, and all the other criminologies that exist. So in this phase, we are seeking for a development of a Caribbean criminology that is quite distinct and based on some of our own methodologies and some of our own um, theories. So that's the timeline um, that I've presented, again, to give you an idea as to where we are at in the context of criminology in the region. So from an institutional perspective, there are not enough full academic programs on criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean. For instance, we have the University of Trinidad and Tobago, and they only offer Bachelor of Applied Science, Sciences in Criminology and Public Safety. The University of Southern Caribbean offers a Bachelor of Science in Criminology and Criminal Justice at two um, islands within the region. They also offer a Master of Science in National Security and Intelligence Studies. We also have the College of Science, Technology, and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago, CUSTAT, and they offer certificate in criminal justice, associate degree in applied sciences in criminal justice and a bachelor in criminal justice. Or we also have what we term the UE Open Campus, which is a distant um, education uh, formatted institution. And they offer a certificate in criminology. Now, I've said all this to indicate as well that though we have these programs and they fall broadly under the ambit of criminology, we also have a slew of short courses and minor co minors in criminology offered by a variety of tertiary education providers in the region. As it relates to the teaching of criminology, the academic program and courses are generally stagnated with minor changes made over the years. And while some people may think that I am not speaking too well about criminology in the region, that's the fact. As I said earlier, I was one of the first students in that program in 2005. And I can still walk into any lecture theater where those same courses are being taught. 
from 2005. Minor, minor changes have been made. So for instance, at my university, we have a chronic lack of newer courses such as green criminology, which I think is actually very much important for a region such as the Caribbean. Uh, other courses such as forensic criminology and semiology, which form the staple diet of uh, criminological courses at contemporary universities. In fact, our students have, have been clamoring for changes into these courses. And I know that some of my students are actually listening and they will be able to, to um, substantiate what I have just said. So, but much of the stagnation is tied to funding. And when we look at, at, figure, at, the, at figure one, which spoke about our resources, that's tied. The stagnation is tied into the lack of resources. So I know that uh, some of you are tutors, lecturers, etc. In the context of teaching, in the context of teaching, does anyone in this room supervise 15 master students, three MPhil students, and two PhD students? <laughs> so that's my position. But that's not only my position, that's the position of my other colleagues within my department. And as you know, we must publish. We must conduct research as well. Because in academia, as you know, one of our mottos is publish or perish. So we have a very burdensome teaching load. And why that? is not the responsibility or the fault of those at the center. Again, I'm simply providing information so that you can form an opinion of your own as to where we in the Anglophone Caribbean are located. So apart from the stagnated nature of the course offerings, the Caribbean populace does not possess a high level of research culture that is evident at the center. And quite frustratingly, according to Professor Ramesh Tiesaran and Dr. Vanas James, Data collection in the region is in an innovated state. In other words, data collection in the region, it's in, it's in a poor state. Now, a bit later in the presentation, I will touch on what leads to some of the challenges for data collection. Now, I mentioned 12 islands that consist the Anglophone Caribbean. And can you imagine we are under that umbrella body of the Caribbean? Yet laws in different countries or in different jurisdictions, they are different. So what may be, what may consist of a murder in one country will uh, not consist or will not be two murder in another country, right? So that's just uh, one of the challenges that um, I wanted to touch on. The second nugget that I'd like to touch on this afternoon is scholarship, looking at research and publication. When instructively, the world is gradually shrinking due to globalization of people's goods and services. And it's important that we as criminologists, that we are armed with an understanding of how criminology operates globally. While it's one discipline, while criminology is one discipline, there are different nuances associated with criminology in different uh, areas of the world. And due to the increasing pace of globalization, modernization, and technological evolution, again, it's important that we understand not only criminology in the UK, but we need to understand criminology in Australia, criminology in Asia. At least we must have a basic understanding or basic sense of what obtains in those regions. In the context of research in the Anglophone Caribbean, a bothersome issue is that early research in the region involved researchers from the West, researchers from the UK, et cetera, researchers from the US, researchers from Europe, examining crime and deviance in the Caribbean using models and theories that were developed in the West to try to understand local problems. And by that, it facilitated what is known as uh, universalizing or having universal applications. However, universalizing um, universalizing 
though prevalent, is not really good for criminology. Further, there's a body of research in the region that was conducted by what we in the Caribbean term vacation scholars. So they come to the region and they conduct research. And I must admit that some of the research that has been conducted in the region is top draw, is top notch. But I have seen some publications that used less than rigorous sources using, uh, uh, I mean, basically using newspaper articles as the crux of the research. And some of these have found their place and they found their way in international journals simply because the research was conducted by what we in the Caribbean to privileged scholars. And the articles were also reviewed by individuals from a similar cult. And again, this is something I'll touch on in a bit. And therefore, I argue that this gap must be corrected by providing a critical examination of research and asking new questions about those research norms. An unbiased assessment of criminological research in the English-speaking Caribbean today will provide a general impression that it has been on an upward movement. And that upward movement has a lot to do with quality as well as quantity, not only numbers, but in the quality of research that we have emanating from the Caribbean. And evidence can be drawn from country level research outputs, for example, by my good self in 2019 and 2020, Leslie Dacia, Leslie in 2019, Yesaran in 2020, that use perspectives and approaches that were distinctly Caribbean in their need. Another aspect that we can look at is capacity building. And capacity building is important if we are to develop criminology in the Caribbean and bring it up to the level uh, that exists at the center. So capacity building is also evident with recent developments such as the founding of what is now known as the Caribbean Journal of Criminology that was founded in 1976 by the University of the West Indies. We also have the recent uh, founding of the Association of Caribbean Criminal Justice Practitioners that was only founded in 2015. We have the Caribbean Crime and Justice Association established less than a decade ago. This group of Caribbean criminologists, we meet annually at conferences, either the ASC or ACGS, some that you would be or should be familiar with. Additionally, mention must be made of the Caribbean Studies Association, which was formed 48 um, years ago in 1974. And while the CSA is interdisciplinary in nature, it has always pushed the agenda of criminology in the region. Additionally, an increasing number of Caribbean scholars are now conducting research that focuses on both Caribbean and non-Caribbean topics. While an increasing number of scholars from, of non-Caribbean origin are conducting collaborative research seeking enhanced insights into Caribbean criminology. In fact, just before we started, I was sharing some insights with Omar on the outside and realized that we have some similar interests and that in itself can lead to some form of collaborative research. Details of research conducted by Caribbean scholars in the Caribbean are now increasingly being found in different international journals, and they're becoming more and more visible through the prism windows of those professional organizations that I've just mentioned above. The scholarship is also being found through focused publication or publications focusing, research focusing solely on the Caribbean for example, the forthcoming Caribbean Handbook of Criminology that I am currently editing, and it is tentatively scheduled for publication in 2023. In fact, uh, Luis can attest to the fact that we have been doing research in the region. We have been leading research. Caribbean scholars have been leading research uh, in that area as well.
So yes, the research in the Caribbean, it's growing. It might not be growing exponentially, but it is constant. And from where I sit as a scholar, as a criminologist, as a lecturer, I have seen students who have taken on that mantle. I refer to my students as budding criminologists. They have taken on that mantle and several of them have published independently of myself. Several have also published um, with me. So I'm seeing the gains, I'm seeing that movement, I'm seeing that trust, I'm seeing that desire to move criminology in the Caribbean, to move it from the fringes and to have it more aligned to the center where people like myself uh, and other criminologists in the region will be recognized for the work that we have done and that we continue to do. So I want to look at the third nugget and the third nugget looks at challenges, achievements and opportunities. And the first sub nugget that I look at is challenges. Now, in spite of clear evidence of institutional growth, because we as a university, and I can speak conclusively about the University of the West Indies, we have been growing criminology. So despite the significance and despite the growth of criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean, Wallace 2020, the current first vice president of the Association of Caribbean Criminal Justice Practitioners point out, and I quote, the pace of growth of criminology in the Caribbean is much slower when compared with the rapid development of criminology in North America and Europe, end of quote. So with that said, it is argued that not much is known about criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean when compared to other regions of the world, and that there is a general lack of understanding of our realities. One of the things I do whenever I conduct lectures outside of Trinidad and Tobago is I ask my constituents, I ask students, I ask some of the lecturers, tell me the name of one Caribbean criminologist. Anyone wants to hazard a guess besides Wendell Wallace? <laughs> and of course, I wouldn't include Luis in that. Luis may know a bit more, right? As Luis has written um, on a couple of occasions with me and for me. But that's one of the challenges. You look as though you want to, to, to take that chance. <laughs> right? Now, if, it was, if, if this scenario was reversed, and you were to walk into one of my lectures and ask, could you tell me the name, names of scholars, criminologists in the UK, in uh, the USA, they can give you a bit all. In fact, as a student, one of my desires was to have some Caribbean literature. I started reading some of the, the persons who I think they associated with, with Oxford University. My readings took me to Professor Ian Loder. I think he was here, I'm not, I'm not too certain, okay. right? <laughs> Carolyn Hoyle, <laughs> right? Rob I. Morby, Rob Morby, right? Some other, um, I could have named a host of UK scholars in criminology. So again, if you look at it in the context of positionality, of knowledge, we are more on the fringes. Another challenge that obfuscates criminology in the English-speaking Caribbean is a worrying trend that is facilitated by journals, funding agencies, and book publishers. Again, they are generally located at the center. And that worries, that worrisome trend has a lot to do with the proclivity of those at the center who require us in the Caribbean, in the Anglophone Caribbean, they require us to engage with local problems, but they constantly command and constantly require us to justify our research and to justify our findings through the context of those at the center. So even though we are conducting locally based research, validation comes from the north, or it comes from the center. 
constructively the need for northern validation of Caribbean criminological scholarship. That is not new. It has existed since the time of Ken Price in 1976, and it has always posed a challenge for the development of criminology in the region. And that led to Ken Price's 1976 call for a Caribbean criminology. According to Price 1976, a Caribbean criminology is needed to rectify the Northern bias by problematizing criminological knowledge production and incorporating marginalized perspectives from scholars in the Caribbean due to our distinct uniqueness. Now, from a theoretical perspective, the need for a Caribbean criminology is still valid. I have searched far and wide, and I have not found one theory that emanates from the Caribbean. From a method methodological perspective, gains have been made. I have seen gains made in terms of usage of uh, different methods. For example, liming, and I'll explain what that is, liming and storytelling, they are now being used as forms of data collection in the Caribbean. So you all would or should be familiar with storytelling, right? And that is actually a mean of gathering data. And that's been used now in the Caribbean. Liming is a unique term to the Caribbean. It basically means socializing, hanging out. So there are some communities, there are some populations that if you go into those if, if you go into those communities um, with pen and paper and you're all suited up, they will not respond to you. So it's more, um, you have to conduct research that is ethnographic in nature, but not really ethnographic. So you have to go into what we call the blocks and the street corners and you dress down in a t-shirt and a jeans and you engage them. So you may purchase a beer or two beers. Um, it's not that you're trying to drunk your participants to get information, but you have to meet them on a particular level. And we now use liming as a means of gathering data. It may sound, to some people, this may sound um, as not eschewing um, rigor, but it can be very rigorous if conducted properly. As I said, there are some populations that you must come down to their level to get the data. So liming is now used in the Caribbean as a mean of data collection. But generally speaking, that demand for northern validation of Caribbean criminological thought, that has the potential to diminish the ability or the possibility of Caribbean scholars conducting local research. If every time one conducts research in the Caribbean, you need northern validation, then um, that in itself may diminish the willingness of persons to contribute. Another nebulous concern facing scholars in the region relates to publications of scholarly articles in so-called international journals, which in my considered view, they are only international in name. I make um, that pronunciation, I make that um, quite vividly. So I want to challenge you, take out your phones, the tablets, the laptops, look at any top tier criminological journal. And you need not only look at the top tier, look at some of the lower level um, criminological journals. And tell me if you see any editor in chief from the Anglophone Caribbean. Look at the editorial boards. Tell me if you see any Anglo Caribbean scholar on those boards. Quite often, I'm sent um, articles to review. And I ask myself, am I only worthy of being a reviewer for those at the center? Why can't I be on the editorial board? And I've started sending, I've seen ads, I've seen advertisements, uh, you know, requests for, for editors, and I have sent so, for example, Cambridge Journal of Evidence-Based Policing, uh, Policing and International Journal of Police Strategies and Management, etc. And not only 
have I sent, but I've seen colleagues who have sent. And I find in some instances that the response borders on being facetious, borders on being rude. So one of the replies that I received to this was that, Dear Dr. Wallace, we have received your application to serve on the editorial board. However, due to your location, you may not be able to properly, see the term I have here, you may not be able to, to fully grasp the context of these international submissions. Those are some of the challenges, Omar, that we face in the Caribbean. And this is not a figment of my imagination. I want you to engage with any scholar in the Caribbean. And these are some of the challenges that they will tell you that they face. What's the reason for that? We are located on the periphery. We are on the margins. As mentioned before, when you examine the state of criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean, another weakness that is noticeable is the lack of Caribbean theories in criminology. In fact, all of the theories that I have used as a student, all of the theories that I continue to use as a lecturer, as an educator, they come from the center. No Caribbean-based theories. So what that means is that we use theories from the center to explain, evaluate, and understand local issues, right? And in my view, that's, I link that perspective to what Milan and Thre 2019 term as universalizing of theories. And what Milan and Thre means is that when we universalize theories, we negate, we forget, we neglect the fact that problems, criminological problems, occur in different parts of the world and that we cannot juxtapose our theories from other regions onto other regions and term them as the other, right? So we, that's another challenge that we face. Therefore, in order to move criminology in the Caribbean from the fringes of the periphery, our criminological outcomes must be increased. We must increase our outputs. And by that, I make reference to um, the amount of scholars, the amount of criminologists. Um, we should increase that. We should increase our outputs of peer-reviewed journals. We should increase um, our own journals, we should try to have journals that are based in the Caribbean. Yes, we have one or two, um, but unfortunately, we in the Caribbean have been taught that we must publish in top tier journals that have impact factors, high impact factors. And because these, it's, it's a bit circular. So we are told to publish in these international journals with high impact factors, yet at the same time, we are also told to conduct Caribbean research, but we are not publishing those, or, or we hesitate to publish in our own Caribbean um, journals. And when we don't publish in those journals, what we are doing is that we can never get the impact factor to increase. So it's a bit of a circular problem that we face. In terms of achievements, from a Caribbean perspective, I think that despite the challenges that we have achieved, we have made some achievements. Numerous scholarly articles produced by Caribbean criminologists, they have already appeared in local, regional, and international journals. And I suspect that this will continue to grow in future years as we have more and more uh, PhDs in criminology being produced both locally, as well as having uh, students, PhD students return from Europe, uh, from the USA, from the UK, um, and return from those graduate schools with a wealth of knowledge 
that can impact and enhance uh, what we already have in the Caribbean. I believe that such an outcome is not far off. However, the key to this will be a steady commitment to empiricism and increased allocation of funding to tertiary institutions in the Caribbean. In terms of achievements, several Caribbean criminologists have conducted consultancies with regional governments. We have provided technical assistance to governments as well. We have trained a host of individuals within criminal justice systems, and we have collaborated on research in the Caribbean with uh, funding agencies such as the IDB, OAS, the World Bank, and the United Nations. Therefore, while we in the Caribbean, while we may have been the last to join that criminological race, as I said, criminology in the region, in the Anglophone Caribbean, is less than two decades old. So we are probably the last to join that race. I'm proud to announce that there is in place a provisional acceptance for the production of a handbook of Caribbean criminology, as mentioned earlier. And what this will do is that it serves to enhance and truly internationalize criminology and place the English speaking Caribbean on the list with other geographic locations where criminology is already well established. In the context of scholarly journals in the Anglophone Caribbean, we have the Caribbean Journal of Criminology, which is based at the Institute of, Institute of Criminal Justice and Security at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. And that is indeed a bright beacon for persons like my good self. So since we have started the program, that full program that I spoke about in 2005 at the University of the West Indies, we have produced approximately 600 students holding Bachelor of Science degrees in criminology and criminal justice. We have produced approximately 200, student, 200 master students, three MPhils, and seven PhD students at just at our campus. Now, these numbers do not reflect the entire Anglophone Caribbean region as data for, um, is a bit difficult to gather, as I mentioned. But this is just to give you an indication of what obtains at my home university. As it relates to the law, and law is inextricably linked to criminology, is noteworthy that we in the region, that criminologists in the Caribbean region, that we have been in the forefront, we have been leading the charge for law reform, especially in the context of sentencing and punishment. So for example, several of my colleagues, we have led island-wide initiatives and training to members of the judiciary. In fact, quite recently, we did um, some training on restorative justice practices. Um, I think it was in, it was in Cayman Islands, we did some training um, there as well. I, I think it was in Cayman Islands or the Virgin Islands, US Virgin Islands, we led training there um, and the aim is to contemporize their criminal justice system. So we have been on the forefront. In terms of opportunities, the Caribbean is ripe. The Caribbean is ripe for research. The Caribbean is in a state of readiness for research as a host of opportunities for individual and collaborative research are present. In terms of opportunities, there's also a space for funding agencies to assist in capacity building, for example, with interventions dealing with juveniles and uh, mentally ill individuals. As mentioned earlier, ingrained within the psyche of Caribbean peoples is the notion, and some may say the fact, that those at the center conduct research on those on the margins, and that this is hardly ever um, the reverse, where those of us at the margins or the periphery conduct research on those at the center. However, I submit that with the urgency of now, there is an existing opportunity for those of us on the periphery to study the center. And this opportunity is one that criminologists in the Caribbean should grasp if we are to move Caribbean, uh, Caribbean criminology away from its current state on the periphery and move it closer to the center. So let me just pause for one second. I am in the wrap-up phase. 
right? Let me just pause for one second to ask, based on what I have described thus far, do you think that we in the Caribbean, that we are placed at the center, we are at the periphery? What's your thought? I want you to think about that deeply and to share that um, with the audience, share that with me after I am um, completed in approximately five minutes. So when we look at the placement of any geographic region in the context of criminology, whether we place them on the center or on the margins, it's important to note that those at the periphery, we must start using the center as a testing ground because the center has been using us for, for validity for quite a long while. Another key functionality that must be deliberated on when we think about placements of Caribbean criminology, we must look at the relationship between the center and those at the periphery. Now, I argue that we in the Caribbean, that we are on the margins, that we are on the fringes. And these are some of the reasons, my key reasons for that statement. We are generally lacking in validity we are generally lacking in validity as well as visibility in the international arena. Second, the fact that the center studies us and that we hardly study the center um, again places us on the margin. The concentration of scholars from the center and editorial boards of international journals or the lack of Caribbean scholars again that places us on the margins. And those unscrutable challenges that we face from non center jurisdictions where we are required to internationalize our research using a, a, a center or a centric focus that indeed places us at the margin again. So the core message that I want to leave with you today is that while criminology in the Anglophone Caribbean may appear to be situated at the periphery, indeed, it is my considered view that we are located there. The intent of individuals like myself the intent of some of my colleagues, of some of my students, is to move criminology from that distal position on the fringes into a location that is more aligned with the center. To reiterate, while criminology may appear to operate in silos, indeed we do, we have um, Asian criminology, South Asian criminology, Australian criminology, Africana criminology, etc. Much of that has to do with the fact that you have differences in terms of perpetuation of crime, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we as criminologists, we have a responsibility to ensure that criminology is truly internationalized and that all regions can meet more or less at the center. While that may be for some um, a pipe dream, it is quite possible that that can be done. In other words, the full extent of the criminological discipline can only be explored when we have the inclusion of those of us who are on the margins. And if that does not occur, we will be failing in the development of criminology as a discipline. To conclude, so that means I'm almost through. <laughs> So to conclude my discussion, let me again thank, thank the Oxford University Southernizing Criminology Discussion Group, uh, more specifically, Luis and Carla and all the others who made this talk possible. This is the invitation that was extended to me. It's well received and I trust that my discourse here this afternoon, that it at least satisfies Luis and it satisfies the audience. Also want to wish Luis and Carla on the Oxford University Southernizing Discussion Group. I want to wish you all the best in your future endeavors as well. And to the listening and to the viewing audience, I exhort you to stay open-minded. It's important that we stay open-minded. I tell my students that two things work best when they open. One, the mind, and two, a parachute. So we want you to keep your minds open, right? So I exhort you to stay open-minded, stay awake, so that we can shape the future of criminology, that we can impact individual criminologies in different parts of the world 
while collectively being willing to meet each other, to meet each other at the crossroads. And if we cannot meet at the crossroads, it's my fervent desire that those at the center, for example, Oxford University at the center, that they will create opportunities for research, for exchange, for scholarship, and for collaborations for those of us who desire to move criminology in the different parts of the world, in the disparate parts of the world, from, as I said, from the distal positions into situations that are more aligned with what exists at the center. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and may God bless you all this afternoon. Thanks again. So um, we are in the question and answer phase. My email address is here.